please, dispatch. This is Heidi. Yeah, I'd like to report uh, a situation where there's an adult walking around the parking lot by CVS. Known from some past history, following kids around, he's been talking to our neighbor's kid. I just kind of had a really strange encounter at the parking lot in um, at the Heinen's in the village. With like a man came up to my car, like you know, right up to our door in the car, and kind of like started talking. My kids are like two and four, and kind of like started talking to the kids, and okay, kind of just like gave me the creep. Yeah, he told them. He had a limo. At one point, he's like, I used to drive all these famous people around, so he's showing them pictures. I actually just came home and Googled them because I was, like, so creeped out by it. Yeah. And, like, the first thing that came up was, like, that a limousine driver denies child enticement. There was a known incident a few years ago in Solon where he tried to lure a couple boys into a limousine. And, like, he went back to his car. Like, I was, like, trying to wait for him to drive away, and he went back to his car, and then he came back with, like, a carnation flower and gave it to my daughter. That's just like so. Funny. That would creep me out. I'm sorry. I don't know all the details, but I'm hearing this all hearsay that he was arrested on because he had 74 cats, and they finally arrested him on animal negligence or something like that. I mean, gonna... he, he technically hasn't done anything, um, but okay. nothing bad happened to us. You know, it was just like you know, I was like making sure he wasn't following us home. And people know who he is. The, the, he's got a nickname called like Hollywood Bob told me his name was Hollywood Bob and like you know he was like you know who I am I'm Hollywood Bob and Hollywood Bob you said yeah I think that's what they call him I remember I was at a Jonas Brothers concert. I, I met you at that time, and I was like, who is this guy? You know, he lo looks kind of um, strange. It was strange. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, scary, like people say. Yeah, 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 exactly. People look at me and think I'm really weird. It's like uh, when I was with, uh, who the heck was that one guy, Obama. He thought I was weird, and I told him, I said, you're weird, not me. You drove Obama? Yeah. How do people react when they see you around? The older people like me, because they know who I am. And you get other people, they think I'm screwy. You've known him for a long time. Oh my goodness, yes. I probably ran into Bob about 45 years ago now. I always thought Bob was uh, a little strange, but all the time that I've known him, I think he's a very kind, caring person who tries to do the right thing. When I was with Trump, I, I was with him before he got elected. And he was, he was cool too, but I told him, I said, you gotta do something with your hair. He said, well, I said, if you're gonna be the president, you gotta do something different. Because it, I mean, you look like a clown. He said, what? I said, you look like a clown. You start laughing and, and you get excited. You just look like a moron. He didn't listen to you though. No, he, he gave me a good tip. He's got a great heart. He's harmless. He gets, he, he's gotten a bad rap over time. There's no doubt about that. <laughs> Angel, Princess. These all have been the good people I've been with. And they could never understand how I got all these people. It's, it's a word of mouth. If you want something good, call Hollywood Bob. Well, over this side here, I was with Joe Frazier and his, that's when he fought uh, Muhammad Ali. I was with him. That's his autograph? Yep. And you drove Joe Frazier? Yep. To that fight? Yep. Here's another two, two good people. Is that Morgan Freeman? Yep. Here's another one, the, the Teen Magazine. These yes, guys. Thank you. Yep. Well yep. <laughs> there was a teenager, and then I got arrested for um, robbing a bank. Well, I had uh, two other guys going to help me. They didn't show up. I went inside. <laughs> they were supposed to show up, too. And then nobody showed up. Did you have a gun? No. So you're just going to go and rob the bank? Yeah, and tell them I had a gun in my jacket. And then they call, they call the police department on me. <laughs> Back in them days, things were different. That was with uh, Smitty, I think was, his name was Smitty, the chief of police at that time. And he liked me, so he stuck up for me and I got probation. And everybody thought I was nuts. And they still do. I used to ride a Harley. And people were, you know, these, red, these stories were kind of scared of me. They look at me because I dress all in black, and I, you know, I'm not that scary, I don't think. 
Did you have the same style back then? Yeah. You did? <laughs> yeah. Bob does dress a little strange, and his hair is sort of stringy and sort of long, but uh, I don't mean he's a hippie or anything like that. Well, like this one lady, she says, Hollywood, how would you like to have $200? I said, for what? She says, my husband says we're going to give you $200 when you pick us up. Make sure you wear shorts. I said, keep you $200. I don't wear shorts. <laughs> I said, you ever see these people walking around in shorts, the guys and stuff? They look like, they, they don't even dress like this in Germany. You know, you have a style, keep it. This way, when you die, they know how you dress you. So next time, don't come around in shorts, right? I ain't saying you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 72 years old. Yeah. I like the way I am. Tell me about the Harvey P. Carr story and how that all came to be. He put me in comic books that he and Picard, they had a somewhat the same personality. So the two of them bonded and uh, became friends. I got the books in the office and stuff like that. He was a nice guy, I liked him. Oh, that's cool. Like my attorney said, you ever get paid for this? I said, no. There's certain people in the world that you know make you feel good, and Harvey's one of them. I, I can't charge this guy to make me, you know, pay me for doing this. I mean, it was an honor. I wrote everything that ever happened in my whole life is on, on my books. And Harvey P. Carr is the one that taught me that. How many books have you written? 11. This book is called Memor... I can't pronounce it. Memor... Memorabilia. Um, it's true stories of Hollywood Bob. Oh, memorabilia. Yes, yeah, it's the worst. <laughs> this is the book that will be coming out in 30 days. And what's it called? Read, I can't pronounce the Memorabilia word. Memorabilia yeah. of Hollywood Bob's True Story. Yeah, this has all about the government. I know when he's driving and like he waits at the airport, he works on these books. I am the legendary Hollywood Bob. I was just your average guy living in, in poverty in Cleveland, Ohio. When the re revelation hit me, why the hell am I living in poverty when I can be, could be famous and have people tread to, to, to my every whim? To the trials of my life, my fame has grown faster than a weed. The first and possible, the most important step I took was my journey to a fame of accelerating myself to the rich and the famous. The dove chases the pigeon, get on top of his back and hump it or do something to it. I mean, they're like companions. I used to make truck tires in that building there. Yeah, Bob was out in Bainbridge and he had a building. I had this one built and I had this one here built too. That was a tough, tough, dirty business. I know when he was capping tires, he would look, I mean, absolutely filthy. Bob came to me and he had an opportunity uh, to buy a limousine company. Before he died, he, he, he sold me a limo. So what am I gonna do with this? He's going to limousine business. And within a couple of years, Bob really expanded that book of business. He had some very influential clients, customers. He became very busy. And then of course, as time went by, he was doing pretty good for a long, long time. A lot of these guys, when they, they do limos, they try to hump the girls and I don't do that. You can't run a business like that. So uh, then if they, they have a bachelorette party, they be trying to hump the girls. You don't do that either, because I'm the one that gets sued. You know, like I tell everybody, pretend this is your mom. When did you become Hollywood Bob? When well, Meg Ryan gave me the name. This is my girlfriend, Meg, <laughs> Meg Ryan. <laughs> and I told her, I said, how'd you find me? She says, they talk about you in California stuff, that you're good at what you do. And you watch, make sure nothing happens to us. I said, thank you. And she, when she got married, she wanted to come to uh, the wedding. I said, I can't do that, why? I said, how am I going to get there? She says, we'll fly you here. I said, no. Nah. Might like the plane would crash. Uh, Leslie Nielsen, he was cool too. I liked him too. I have a lot of people help me. A lot of people think I'm all right. And a few people think I'm nutty in a fruitcake. Like Tony Gambino. How'd you get hooked up with the Gambino fan? I drove as a grandfather. My job was to make sure I take him to church every Sunday. So I used to take him to the cathedral, uh, down the downtown. I get 50 bucks an hour, so I had to do something for the money. So I walk him in there, take his head off, shake it, take his jacket off, shake it, you know. And then people just watching me, you know. So the third time I was there, Bishop Pillar came up and said, I want to talk to you. I said, about what? He says, you're scaring these people. I said, tell the people, look in the mirror, because they scare me. They come to church on a Sunday, ask for forgiveness, and then rob people on Mondays. 
You're not supposed to do that. He said, what religion are you? I said, I have no religion. But I see what's coming. I had this one lady, she's a nice lady. She was 71 years old. Her husband died about two years earlier. And she says, my, my foot always hurts. So I said, well, I used, to, I used to tell people I was a doctor. I said, so give me your foot. So I took her shoe off, took the bottom of her feet, and took my nails to go like this. And she started screaming, she peed herself. <laughs> But she was a nice lady, and then when she died, I went to the funeral. I show respect for good people. My life's been really strange since I was born. I died twice, and I don't want to come back here anymore because people just don't care about other people. Tell me about dying twice. First time was when I was four. My real father, we walked around a lake and we fell in. And when, when everything was done, he got me out. He said, I've been given a blessing. You'll see things before it happens, which I'm kind of mad at him because I do see, I see things before it happens now. Like what? Uh, death. You know, when I go to sleep, I just see things. 2010, they, they killed me in a car accident. So I always watch when I'm driving. I always watch to see who's behind me. You always tell if it's a government plate. And all I remember was uh, I saw a shit. Boom, that was it. And I'm laying there on the driver's side, shook my head, buzz all over, and I heard a voice saying, Get, we're sending you back because your job's not complete. You're never going to get old and you're never going to die. So I looked up, I was looking for my cell phone, couldn't find it. I went on the passenger side, found it, made a 911 call, and they sent three cops. The first cop says, uh, Where's the driver? I said, You're looking at him. He says, Where's the other guy at? There was no other guy. I was brought back for a reason, and I'm working on my reason. So I said, next time I die, just tell the uh, emergency room, put my hands like this, with the nails up in the air, and make sure the night before I find a nice woman. LeBron James. Oh, I used to drive him, I got mad at him because, so I had to go pick him up, and take him to Johnny's. I think it was Johnny's restaurant. And he started some stuff with his, hey, a homie and all this other shit. I said, I'm not a homie. I said, you know, I don't use the words like that. I knocked the hell out. He ain't gonna nuts. I said, because you know what? You even put your, raise your fist, fist up. I'm gonna make a phone call and there'll be a squad team taking you to jail. Yeah, okay. I said, try it, see what happens. He never did. I said, matter of fact, get a cab because I'm leaving the air. You know, ne you'll never work for a cab again. I said, I don't want to work for a cab because they're dumber than you. And then when Hillary ran for president, who and he and they were on TV, she was with him. So I sent them both messages. I said, you both are stupid assholes. This came from Hollywood Bob. <laughs> I was at the airport. I worked with Cleveland Police. He would spend a lot of time at the airport and became very friendly with a um, number of the Cleveland police. A number of those police befriended Bob and gave him a badge. Because the, the good, good cops are good. The young ones are, something's wrong with them. Out here, you forget these clowns out here. Like in City of Solon. All of a sudden, he's experiencing problems out in Solon. You had that incident in Solon. You want to talk about what really happened there? That was 2013, right? Yeah, the guy that uh, has a, lawn, a dry cleaning place. I remember, yeah, I talked to that guy. There had been an investigation with regard to um, an alleged child enticement. But that didn't happen? No. He pulled up in front of a dry cleaning place. I was coming back f f from uh, a job, and I had some laundry in, in my car in the back trunk. But I went in the laundromat, I looked out, and there was kids messing around the limo. And of course, he comes out in his black regalia. And I said, hey, kids, get away from the car. He said, who do you think you are? I said, I own the car. Now get, the, get away from the limo. He said, who do you think you are? I said, you know what? I'm going to call Cleveland Police. And this says friend. So they ran away. The next thing I knew was I looked outside. It was two cops, stolen cops. And they tried to get me for impersonating a police officer, which I didn't. Then they tried to get me for uh, carrying a concealed weapon. 
but I have a, I have a uh, permit to carry it. To seal carry permit. Yeah. And then they, uh, some of my uh, seducing kids, I said, I didn't seduce any kid. I told him, get away from my car. Do you think he would entice children in a way that would be dangerous to them? No, I don't. No, not, not for a, a minute. Apparently someone, you know, maybe read it wrong or took it wrong. Bob said, was it? I was telling him to get away from it. And of course they put that stuff in the paper and it starts a local paper, it starts a, a spiral. I don't believe the evidence is compelling enough to, to warrant charges and certainly not a conviction. And I think that that's pretty clear it just based on, the, based on how everything ultimately played out. So they took me in court and lost. The judge cleared me. He was arrested, but ultimately never charged. He was never charged with child enticement. Right. He was never charged with any sort of weapons violations. Right. They don't, they don't believe I should have a badge or anything from the government in my wallet. I told them, I said, this is mine, not yours. When did things turn harder? That's what I'm thinking. Just recently, he is uh, struggling mentally because of all the, the pressure that's been put on him. whatever reason out there, um, the police departments have put pressure on him. Exactly why he's been singled out, I couldn't tell you. I really don't know. He'll tell you flat out that he knows he looks different. He doesn't want to look like everybody else. You know, in, in a place like Chagrin Falls, he stands out. So, animal cruelty charge. That was the... Uh... You had 72 cats. I didn't have it. Yeah. Right, to tell me the story. Some stressed, some sick. One after the other, humane officers with the Geauga County Rescue Village Monday afternoon pulled these cats from a garage at the Chagrin Valley Limousine Service, a company owned by Bainbridge man Bob Konst. Konst, who was eager to talk on camera and even shared these photos of his cats in his home, tells me he was greeted by sheriff's deputies Monday morning. He told me that the guy has a court order that he's here to seize my cats. There's no reason to do that. It's a bunch of bull. There's only seven, seven or eight, I forget what it was. How'd they come up with 72? Because they made the newspaper, made, you know, and Christian Cartwright was trying to get promoted. I can't give any details, but we wouldn't be removing animals that were healthy. Humane officer Christian Courtright tells me his crew did remove cats from Consta's tailor-made road home, but the process here at his business will likely take several days. We removed a, a number of animals from the building. We set some traps. It's a large open garage area with a lot of room for the cats to, to get away from us. So it makes hand capturing impossible. Are the conditions clean? Uh, we wouldn't be dressed like this if, if we thought that it was sanitary. You guys, all he's doing is trying to make himself look good. Konst says he was taking these cats in to save them from the freezing cold. He found a couple cats that were roaming around their feral cats and he took them in and made sure they had food. And I think over a period of years it just accelerated. If they were sick, he took them to the vet. They're like kids. It's like I told this one lady, someone comes and takes two of your kids at, at, from your house. You'd be mad. I got proof of how much money I spend a day on cat food. I, I don't know how much you were spending feeding these cats, but it was not cheap. But I don't like people who say uh, animal abuse because I don't. I mean, when you're spending $75 a week for a bird seed and everything else, that's not animal abuse. It's no secret that Bob is different. He's extremely eccentric, and I think that 
people pass quite a bit of judgment. And uh, with animals, you know, I think he probably gets that unconditional love from from these companions, and uh, you know, they don't pass judgment. You know, I said, but we got to get rid of the cats. Oh, okay. I didn't think I was doing anything wrong, but I think it was totally, totally blown out of proportion. There were four separate cases, and he was convicted of, of animal cruelty on, on all four cases. The cases didn't go to trial. It, it was, it was a, a plea agreement. He was ultimately placed on five years of probation. There were some conditions with regard to animals going forward. He was not uh, supposed to have any animals. <laughs> And they found him with, a, I don't know, two or three cats or whatever, and a pigeon. He went back to court, and he faced some serious consequences. Yes, he had received 90 days of jail on each of the four cases. Upon the conviction for the probation violation, the judge imposed all 360 days of, of that jail sentence. However, after 80-some days, the judge did grant him early release and placed him back on probation. Well, God, my son had the bird back. I hope you, you made me promise that you take care of him. Get up to him. He, he used to sleep next to my bed upstairs. I used to rub his head. What's you write on there? Heaven, God. I'm sending her, she's going to go to heaven. Hollywood Bob, I got some new, new bad stuff to tell you what happened to me yesterday with the city of Solon. Uh, I got arrested and charged some bullshit crap today. Paid out. Give me a call. Okay, where are you at? At the other end of aisle 11. Robert Konst. Konst? Yeah, K-O-N-S. You got any uh, weapons on you? No, I don't care weapons on you. Okay. I might be in this. You have a warrant. For what? For, let, I guess for criminal you trespass. Day last week, you lose your hands? No, I didn't. Did you give a lady a picture of yourself? Didn't you have like the limo driving business or yeah, something? Yeah, I still do. Yeah. yeah. Still do. Not anything sharp in, my, in your pockets yeah. to see in the book. I can't believe it. Seven, two, two. What was this at? Why was that? I don't know where. I just didn't get a warrant. It was just one outside. Yeah. Thank you. What I'm getting is there's already right. falling in. I'm going to walk out there's these doors over here. I got a breath. Who's this one? The one you got banned from oh. years ago. That was a long time ago. I know. That was like, what, five years ago? Right? Yeah. You know which one that it is. We were both there. Yeah. We both remember that. <laughs> we both remember you. You were holding it up, right? Right? Okay. We're both there. We remember. You gotta remember. It's more dramatic for you than us. Right? I don't know what the hell I did. You got banned from the laundromat for talking to little boys in a car. If I remember right. Oh, that yeah. It? No, they were messing with the car. Yeah. There's two yeah, sides to every there, story. And you went there, uh, you went there last week. Okay. Well, that's what the warrant says. The warrant's good, so we're gonna take you for it. You can argue that 
if it's valid or not in court all you want. It doesn't matter to me. So I'm going to jail now? Yeah. Yep. Well, I don't pick my customers up today. It's not. It's the price of doing business. Well, you put, put your hands up for me a little bit. Nah, you just, you just knew we had the warrants on there. Right yeah, you know, when I got, as soon as I got here, I you know, called to confirm it. Well, Arnold said it. We always rage, Phil. Okay, um, just checking them now. Uh, my call taker, Stevens, was talking about wanting to go back to jail. It's just about to put no ones. Is that up front? Yeah. Don't lose that. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm not going to lose it. It's old school right there. You can't lose that one. That's a classic. I know. Put your legs. They ain't going to let me in there anymore. Where? Here? Yeah. You can go in Giant Eagle as often as you want. Now when they see this shit. Well, you're not you banned remember from here. you? Hey, you're not banned from here. You can go in shopping all you want. Just I just knew you had your warrant. Just can't go to night and day long? They, uh, it was signed last week on Saturday. All right, grab a seat. What was signed? The warrant. Is so when I, saw, when I saw you in here, me? I knew you just Get your butt up there and sit down. Oh, there you go. Jesus Christ. You good? No, I got one more. Thank you. Well, this is somebody walking down. Uh, this made my day. Oh, there, there. I think the guy's name is a first name is Chaz. Ouch. I'll be back in 83 transporting that mail to the jail. Okay. You know, this was handled in court and everything was dropped. I ain't coming back here anymore. Well, I'm glad I have no customers at the airport waiting for me. Right? Especially when you're 60, 72 years old. Yeah, I can imagine. Straight through the other set of doors for me. Everything out of your pockets, um, glasses, jewelry is going to be put in a box for right now. I'm cracking in the back of my car. Yeah. And before I ask you, and everything is on video back there. Like what? what? Little powdered rocks in a little plastic bag. No. Okay, well, it wasn't there before in the early. Hey, hey, me, because I don't do drugs. Okay? Well, where'd it come from then? How the hell do I know? Well, I'm gonna, gonna, gonna watch the video if I see you putting it down there. Go ahead, you ain't gonna see me. Okay. Okay? Because so it, wasn't, it wasn't there before. Well, you better pay attention to tonight. Well, I look the car over every day. It was hard for me to watch. 
I found myself almost getting emotional while watching it. Just sad. Bob went back to this, this dry cleaners, which was the, the scene of this alleged enticement back in 2013. He presented one of the workers with an autographed photo. The owner of Night and Day Dry Cleaners had sent Bob a certified letter warning him that, that he was not permitted to, to come back to the property. If I, if I were to bet, my guess is that he, he had no clue. And as a result, a warrant was issued for his arrest for the criminal trespass. Mr. Longo um, points out that the autograph picture was Bob holding a portrait of John Lennon. And Mr. Longo asserts that that was a threat to his life. Do you have any reaction to that? I would say that it's tenuous. I, I don't know enough about Mr. Longo to really state as to how he could draw that conclusion, um, but it seems to be a bit of a stretch. He was innocently walking around the store with a half full cart of groceries. There were three, at least three officers who approached him. They patted him down. When they arrest somebody, they search him to make sure that the, he has nothing in his pockets that would in any way be dangerous. He was placed under arrest. I believe he was cuffed inside the store and taken outside the store. Law enforcement then proceeded to do one of the most thorough searches that I've seen. In, I've seen quite a few body cam footages and dash cam footages in my, in my time. But at that point in time, they proceeded to, to search him pretty thoroughly. I mean, they went through every single pocket, his socks, um, you know, uh, just about any, any, anything and everything they could search while, without making him take his clothes off, really. So you would say that was a, a very thorough search based on what you've seen before? It was a very thorough search, no question about it. Would you think it would be likely that they would have missed something in his pockets? No. And they then proceeded to put him in the back of, of the police cruiser. What is your reaction to the accusation that he dropped a little bag of crack cocaine in the police cruiser? He would have to be Houdini to somehow, while in handcuffs, placed behind his back, managed to somehow locate this very, very small bag of cocaine in his pocket that, mind you, law enforcement had managed to overlook during their thorough search, get it out of the back of his pocket and wedge it down into the seat. He is squirming around a little bit, mm -hmm. um, saying, ouch. Yep. What do you think about that? handcuffs are painful. They are not comfortable. They're not supposed to be comfortable. They said in the report that you were, you, while you're handcuffed, you were in the back doing something. And he had his hand cu hands cuffed behind him in the back of the police cruiser. Now you're telling us that there were narcotics that he spilled out of his back pocket. Come on, that to me is ludicrous. Come on, guys. I wasn't born last night. That's crazy. I would imagine he was pretty uncomfortable. My, my guess is that most you're going to find most people squirming. They say that I, I'm, I do drugs, and I don't do drugs. You don't do drugs? Nope. Never have. So you think the Seoul police plan to put the drugs there? Yep. Somebody's trying to set him up. I mean, to me, that's so obvious. I, I don't believe that it, was, that it was planted there and that he was set up. I think it's as simple as just negligence or recklessness in, in failing to to sweep the car before he before he was he was arrested and placed in the back of the cruiser. Why are they screwing? That I don't understand. Has to do with the, the from uh, that deal with Solon with the uh, dry cleaning place. So my philosophy is then let's prove this shit wrong, and it, that's it. Do you think Solon prosecutors or police have it out for him? Yes, I do. I really do. 
this is nonsense what, what is going on. Why would you pick on somebody like Bob Kunst, I mean Hollywood Bob, unless somebody is, you never know in these municipalities, you know, who's, who's on whose side and what they're trying to do. Oh, maybe we'll fix this guy so in the community it looks like we're really, you know, watching him. Bob uses drugs? I, I know he doesn't use drugs. I would, I'd be willing to bet my life on that. The cocaine possession, that's pretty serious. Yeah, I know it is. And I was just told the other, uh, yesterday that they'll take, you know, he could take samples of my hair and clear me of everything. I drove all these guys, rock singers, and everything else. I'm not into that stuff. I used to dance when I was a kid, and it was in bars. You think I would like that? Because the music they listen to now, and I'm talking about sex and shit like that. Did you pay for it? Did you pay for it? No, I didn't know I just had to pay for it. So that's what it is. Yeah. I go to court tomorrow morning at 30. So your attorney has to call OTS, and I can give you the number? Yeah, would you? Call a gallon. Smart, spell that. Gallon. Spell that. Gallon. You know one of my books? I got a new book. I like the way people dress, so that's nice. I mean, I get to look at people, and then I get to think, I wonder if they just look like this in Europe. No. That they don't. All those tests were negative. I've been doing this long enough to know that very rarely do you see someone in their 70s without any drug convictions or drug history all of a sudden um, find themselves confronted with a, a possession of, of cocaine charge. You know, not too many people are, are that lucky. The last episode, I had to refer Bob to a high-profile uh, criminal lawyer, but somebody who knows the system is not going to let Bob get pushed around. Judge, we all readings in our plea not guilty all time requirements. Sir, you're not guilty. Please accept it. Your bond is continued at $2,500. It's a drug abuse case. It's a simple allegation that he, well, he was in the back of a police car that he had possession of, uh, I think, crack cocaine. That's it. That's simple. Okay. And um, did he have possession of it? Or? I don't think so. You don't think so? No. Okay. Can you expound on that? I mean, just, they just found crack cocaine. They didn't. They found it in the seat. They didn't find it on him. And when before they put him inside the car, they thoroughly padded him down head to toe. So my guess is it was somebody else's that so they just didn't find it when they transported the prior prisoner. That's you, what happened. You've worked with Bob a little bit. Do you think he does drugs? I don't think so. We're set for trial today, but before we even get to that, I got a notice from pretrial services. Here's what it says. The above defendant was placed on court supervised release as a condition of his bond. He has not adjusted well to supervision. He has not reported to court supervised release. We have concerns, Your Honor, that Mr. Kuntz is greatly losing his ability to be competent to stand trial. Just today, Judge, he couldn't find my law office that he's been to at least on four occasions. It took us a half an hour to, uh, for us to get to the courthouse from my office, which is only a block away because Mr. Khan seems to lose his bearings. Robert, he's asking for a continuance of this trial to allow the court clinic to evaluate you. They're gonna, te they're gonna interview you and evaluate you. I'll get that report back, I would say probably in 30 days. You understand what's going on, right? All right, so I will indicate that we had this discussion today that I've continued the trial. Otherwise, they're asking me to revoke your bond and then you'll be in a jail cell waiting and I don't want to do that to you. I want to make sure you comply with everything, okay? Yes. Understand? Yes, I do. Judge, thank you. You're welcome. Good luck to you, all right? Well, I know a lot of people. <laughs> Thanks.
take them off? It's not. It's just a good place to find them. Does he work out here? I don't know. Okay. He asked me a lot of questions. He ain't telling me nothing. I ain't letting my right hand on my left hand. That's all right. I'm my old school. My name is Brent Dahl. Okay, I'm listening. I'm a documentary maker. I've been working for several months on a story about Hollywood. Oh, you gotta give me your resume. No. <laughs> but anyway. So, you know who Hollywood Bob? No. Hollywood Bob. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So what you yeah. No, no, no. I'm doing a story. I'm telling his story. And so I'm not like on anybody's side. I'm trying to tell the story. I remember the Hollywood Bob. Yeah, did he bring you the one who brought the autograph picture? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hollywood Bob, all right with me. Nice, you know, he seemed like a nice person to me. I don't know what he do outside, but all I know, he's very nice and respectful. Nice. That's all I know. So, he old. He old and he old school and you know, yes, you know how all that is, you know? <laughs> you know, I ain't that serious. Okay. I'm glad to have a little you know? I know that I can do that, make me some money today. <laughs> He's selling all his business. He's going to sell to you. Yeah. Okay. See you later. <laughs>
Mr. He has Bruner? No, he has no, I'd rather before he speak that he talk to Mike O'Shea. Okay, I got What you. he has. Thank you. You can leave, okay? You can leave. Go ahead. You want to talk to the judge. Bob was deemed incompetent to stand trial. He has 12 months that he will likely be required to, to attend some appointments to restore his competence. And in the event that his competence is restored, he will essentially be back at square one, where he is, again, facing this possession of cocaine charge. However, if during that 12 months, if the clinic is unable to restore his competence, the court will dismiss all charges. Do you think it's likely that Bob's cognitive abilities are going to improve? No, I don't. I, I think, if anything, they, they will only get worse. And the fact that, that this case has even gotten to the place where it has is, is somewhat appalling to me. It's personally one of the greatest miscarriages of justice that I've witnessed. dead right now. You mean business-wise? Yeah. People don't use big limos anymore, which I don't blame them. And then sometimes you look in the mirror and say, who, who am I really? This is my girlfriend, Meg Ryan. Oh, that's you with Meg Ryan? Yeah. That's great. I don't have that picture yet. I should have went with her when she wanted me to come to California with her. I don't, I can't fly. All right, Sheriff Municipal Court is now in session. Please be seated. <coughs> Robert Kahn, step to the bench, please. At this time, we would move to dismiss the violation of probation and to terminate the pro defendant's probation effective immediately. You are done with me, Mr. Kahn. Well, I've made a seat on Nothing further, Honor. Thank you very much. Good luck to you, Mr. Kahn. Thanks for being beautiful. Yeah, it's my pleasure. You already paid for it, she said. There's two of there's three of them total. You're supposed to make the three of them. You really want two more sets of open Yeah. All right. What is your hope for Bob's future? I hope that he can find some peace. And closure. Bob has been out there for 30, 40 years. The people that, as far as I know, that he has dealt with, and, and, and they're well-known people in the community, they all seem to like him very, very much. I never heard one bad word until recently about him. Looks are deceiving. If they see Bob walking around the parking lot, what, sh what should they do? Say hello. How's it going? How Good. you been? Good. You don't remember us. Hollywood Bob, right? Yeah. But yeah. They're, they're f don't look around, but they're filming me. Oh, Why are they doing that? I don't know. I've been here for an hour and a half walking around talking to people. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Good luck. <laughs> Hello. How you doing? Pretty Hi. good. Cleveland? Yeah. I bet you know a lot of people I know. Policeman? You know policemen from Cleveland? Yeah. My Please. name is Angelo. I'm Hollywood Bob. Hollywood Bob? Yes. What, what are you, movie star? Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> hey! How's it going? <laughs> I didn't see the Everybody stage. Everybody knows you. <laughs> yeah. Everybody knows you guys. Hollywood, glad I met you. Same good here. guy. Hollywood. <laughs> we should have pulled in that place there and then the kids could have waved at us. 
They were waving us when we went by. Oh yeah, and the way I looked. 